five. Are you ready? Yeah. Uh, it is ten. It is ten oh five, and uh, the main business meeting of the sixty fifth Worldcom will be in order. Okay. And then preliminary information. First of all, from the secretary who will, it does not appear to be obliged to make the Japanese announcement that he did yesterday, although I'm sure it's appreciated for the record. Okay. Uh, key thing is, phase and set is done. You can do that by pressing and holding the hash key on these G-phones. Press and hold that button. Your phone will buzz a little bit, and now you will be on silent mode. If you do not do this, and your phone rings anyway, Quietly make your way to the door and take the phone call outside, please, as uh, for the benefit of all of our other members here. Thank you. Uh, sign up sheet now? Oh, yes. Sign up sheet, we're going to circulate it. Um, usual thing, uh, tick yourself off. Uh, today is Saturday, so you want to tick in the Saturday column, or possibly the Friday column if you were here yesterday and didn't tick it there. Okay? And take the pen, and you have a pen to put with pen there as well. Take the cap off the pen, or the pen will not come back. Take the cap off the head of the pen, or the pen will not come back. <laughs> it's not deliberate, it's psychological. People won't put uncapped pens into their pockets, especially now that pocket protectors have become an endangered species. <laughs> yes, they will, and it's fun to watch. <laughs> we'll get to you in a moment, okay? Because we want to get the head of people. That's right. Um, all right, I am Kevin Stanley. I am chairman of the business meeting. To my right is Don Eastlake, the, my deputy. He will preside in, in such cases as I might have to recuse myself or if we should go into committee of the poll again. Also timekeeper. And he is also timekeeper. And that's it. Uh, to my left is the incredible Pat McMurray, secretary, and uh, all, all about a good person. And over in, in the Whispers uniform is our one uh, general staff member, Lisa Hayes, who is our uh, photographer and videographer. This is actually an official recording on our behalf. Um, and I believe, Lisa, you say you have set the camera so that if somebody were to step over here to Don's right, they would be in shot. Right on his right. Yeah, if you were to stand just to the right of Don, you will be in the shot. Otherwise, the official recording will hear some of your voice and your back, maybe, if you happen to be in shot. Okay. Um, I'd just like to thank William Keaton for his support in creating this page. Thank you very much, William. Regarding the papers, if you picked up an agenda yesterday, you have the most of the agenda. You should not have picked up another set that is over there. If you did work not here yesterday, you should pick up an agenda from over there. You should also, in any event, pick up this loose sheet that was just referred to. That is the corrected version passed on from yesterday's business meeting on that item that we will be discussing. I believe, once again, we have mostly people who are familiar with business meeting procedures and have been here before. Is there anybody here who has not attended a WISPAS business meeting before? Okay? There being at least one, I do need to go through some things. Uh, to, we will be going through the agenda here. Many of the items that are on this agenda were dealt with yesterday. We're going to be, con uh, ha we're in announcements right now, which is up above committee reports, not on the printed agenda. We will be having one item under 1.1. We will go down to, from there, to a quick stop at WorldCon reports at item, item 2. We then move to item 3.1, which is a constitutional amendment awaiting ratification. Uh, we then continue on to items under 4.3. Today, we will be discussing items 4.3.1, uh, gone, 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 and gone, yeah. and item 4.3.2. The best website you go. Item 4.3.3 regarding uh, the not the, the they also ran list will be considered at tomorrow's business meeting. Although it's a small group and I'm trying to keep some informality, I'm, I am still want people to stand when they address the chair if they can. Now there's a couple people who will can't. Uh, Linda, if it's a hardship for you, you don't have to. Thank you. I understand. Um, if you wish to uh, speak, to, the, to make a motion, to speak in debate, you need to rise. And when I call on you, you begin speaking. 
When you finish speaking, sit down. That's yielding the floor. Until you sit down, you have not yielded the floor. And until you sit down, other people cannot claim the floor in front of you by standing up unless they are trying to interrupt for a point of order or some other disruption. And I should point out that correcting another speaker's errors of fact is not a valid point of order under most circumstances. If you want to correct somebody else's speech by saying that's wrong and I believe otherwise, I think it's otherwise or it is otherwise, you have to use your own debate time for that. Okay, have I covered, is that most of the decorum issues? All right, that being the case, we have an, uh, uh, an announcement we've been asked from uh, Mr. Glazer on behalf of Nippon 2007 that I think is of interest to everyone. Right. Uh, I won't go through the, the daily, but these are the membership totals for on-site. Okay, this is not reflective of people who have bought membership. These are people who are live bodies here. As of what time? As of this morning. This morning. Okay. There are a total of 2,122 members on-site, of which 1,270 live in Japan or claim Japan for nationality, and 852 from the rest of the world. Um, if you want to see the details break down by day, I have it, uh, but I don't feel like, you know, I don't think it's something that needs to be rehearsed through the audience. That, no, you don't. No, um, you're, you're quite right. Thank you. <laughs> uh, the other thing I would add is that we had approximately 100 one day membership yesterday, uh, almost all from Japan. <laughs> all of them, I'm amazed there's more than zero in Japan, but all right. Okay, I have, one, I have one other announcement. Now, you may or may not have noticed it in your package of papers, but there is a thing called a sticker book in your, in your package. Some of you may actually be trading stickers. There is a WISPA sticker that is my personal sticker as well. I am going to send this book around. I did this yesterday. I'm going to send this to the audience. If anybody wants a WISPA sticker, there, please take one. And if you are trading stickers out, I would like yours in this book. And I'm taking <laughs> advantage of my position. Well, it's the one that has my WISPA sticker. I put the WISPA sticker on the front as well. You already, you already gave me a chop. Um, and, some of you, and then after the meeting, you can do the other chops and so on. Um, I also have a, a dwindling supply of business meeting fandom badge stickers. If you already have one, don't get another one, but if you'd like one, take one. So, Vince, if you start that around. Um, something of interest a little to some folks here is to remind them that after tomorrow's business meeting, by the way, if the sheet somehow gets empty, I have another sheet up here. I have more. I've got lots more. I'm just sending a few around. Um, that's, that's a good point, though. I might have, have overstated it. Um, Tomorrow's business meeting, after it is concluded, the uh, traditional Worldcon chairs photo will take place here. Um, at a special, although we'll probably have to move chairs around and make enough room for it. But, uh, and, <laughs> on both counts, Mr. Glazer. Uh, in addition, the Mark Protection Committee meeting will probably convene here after that photo shoot is over. Whether we'll stay here or not depends on whether we, Scott Dennis has time to come over from the exhibit hall. Otherwise, we have to take the mountain to Mohammed yeah. because there are only eight voting members of the Mark Protection Committee at the con, and that's the quorum. Yeah. <laughs> I think I've covered all the announcements, and therefore, speaking of the Mark Protection Committee meeting, which was one of the reasons I wanted to get that one in there, we are at uh, the elections to the Mark Protection Committee meeting. At yesterday's meeting, the three incumbent directors, uh, who are Ben Yellow, Kevin Stanley, and Tim Illingworth, were nominated. No others have been nominated. Um, the chair, and, and if there, if, is there any person who considers it untoward for the chair, who is also one of the candidates, to preside at this point? Hearing none, the chair will continue. Is there any objection to suspending the rules and re-electing the incumbents without the need of a written ballot? Hearing none, the incumbents are re-elected. Okay. <coughs> that takes us on to page two and into Worldcon reports. Um, 
Are, I, I, we, we sent out pendings on a couple of these reports. Are there any who wish to, did any come back for today? Uh, yeah. Mr. Glazer. Yeah. So, um, I was charged by this um, body to report on two questions. I have an answer for one. The other one is still pending I'm getting the right people together. Uh, so, it was asked yesterday about LA Con's report and a figure uh, which was transferred to the Southern California Institute of Benefits, uh, commonly known as Giffy. Uh, Giffy maintains a fund called the Benefit of Fandom. This money is held separate from uh, the corporation's main money, or normal, normal fund, and is reported. And so that money was transferred to that fund. Okay. Uh, does anyone else, any, anyone here wish to speak to this issue? If they do, would they, st Mr. Clark, stand, please? I was just hoping for a little more expansion on this, on the purpose on, on the fund. Okay, the fund uh, has been used for the kinds of things that many people use, uh, less of World Fund funds where we uh, sponsor conventions or help out conventions, uh, uh, help out clubs. Uh, we've bought, uh, we've used it to buy the exhibit shipping containers, all those kinds of things. The project. What was the actual name of the fund? It is the Benefit of Fandom. The Skiffy Benefit of Fandom Fund. Yes. Mr. Yellow. Um, if it will help the explanation, there's another Skiffy director who's been a Skiffy director, I think, longer than anybody else here. <laughs> um, basically, what that simply is, is it's a way for us to internally keep track of which is the money that is Worldcon constrained versus the money that is not Worldcon constrained. Uh, which, which, which of the money is restricted in the uses that Skippy can use it to by the constraints in the Constitution, i.e. that it must be used for the benefit of society as a whole. Right. So that's simply our tag for the money that exists there. Uh, that money from the prior LA con had been kept entirely. Basically, that's our reportable balance fund and had been completely drained by the, from the prior LA con because the money from LA con 3, once LA con 4, it was handed over. We, we know it was that. handed over completely. And this essentially starts the re existence of the constrained funding section of our total financial picture. I, I, the, uh, the chair's unsure about this, but is I'm really thinking it's possible that, that WISPAS, as long as Skippy has it, even in a restricted fund like that, that it would prefer to keep getting reports on how that money is being spent, as it's not left. And the intention is to continue giving reports. Oh, okay, well that's the important thing, is that Skippy intends to report on how it spends money and that transfer, that something like that. In other words, that we recognize that that is a reportable balance. Okay, so that money in that fund is still considered WSFIS reportable. That was right. the issue, I think, at, at all points here. Okay. So, in a sense, um, it's just putting it under the bank account. Yeah. You'll continue to get LA Con reports, basically. And you're stuck with getting LA Con reports until we spend that money. <laughs> okay. <coughs> and then the other thing I was charged with was to get a report of the pond, uh, you know, uh, balance sheet, and I have not been able to uh, uh, have any time <coughs> in one place at one time for long enough to do that. So. Understood. Would not be the first time the seating, seated world time has been uh, a little too busy to actually report. <laughs> okay. I don't think there's anything else we will come back to under this under this heading tomorrow. Uh, uh, basically, I'm not going to I'm not going to stop at this entry tomorrow unless Mr. Glazer, unless you come and tell me tomorrow explicitly you have something. I'm just going to go on by because fair enough. We now move to substantive business, which you've all been waiting for. <laughs> Uh, let me see. Where did the clipboard clipboard is continuing to move? Thank you. Item three point one. Behind you. Oh, wait, wait, wait. Hang on. Move. Here. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
right. Item 3.1 is uh, Best Artist at Hugo Eligibility. This is a ratification. Uh, if adopted here, it becomes part of the WSPIS Constitution and takes effect affecting next year's Hugo Award. It adds a sentence to the notification and acceptance, as you can read here, that would require in the Best Professional Artist category that persons accepting it must include citations of at least three works first published in the eligible year. The debate time for this is 10 minutes. The chair wants to remind members that this time li limit can be changed, either reduced or extended by a two-thirds vote. Uh, are any of the makers of this motion here? You, yeah, ben, you, you were one of the makers, correct? Um, I chaired the committee that reported back. That's what I thought. Okay. Mr. Yellow gets the first speech on this. Ten minutes, five minutes each way. Um, the discussion had always, from last time, had been uh, how it is that people know what were the works that were eligible in the specific year. Uh, there had been no way of knowing, and there was a feeling that people did not want to be voting on best artist without knowing something about what that artist had done during the year. Uh, this, there, were, there is an existing business meeting resolution that requests artists to provide that information. Uh, this merely makes it mandatory. Okay. Is there a speech against Mr. Matthews? Uh, the thing says published. If you notice in the chess leaves, there is a best unpublished cover. Just a moment and hold the time, please. Okay. If you need, do you need that door cleared? Okay, I just wanted to make. Okay, I'm sorry. I thought we had a door jam there. Okay. There okay. is a best unpublished <laughs> color, best unpublished monochrome. A lot of the artists are now only exhibiting in the art shows or in galleries, such as Michael Whalen. So that if you nominated Michael Whalen for what you've seen in the art show. He isn't published this year, or last year. So, so I think you are limiting. It needs to be something uh, on uh, to show the work, whatever. The chair wishes to suggest that the members of this convention pick up their program books <laughs> and turn to page, and I'll find the specific page here. Page E085. Thank you. <laughs> Please turn to page E085 in your hymnals. 3.3.10. <laughs> and read the definition and with the, uh, is that, a, is that, that's a mobile phone call. I hope you part of and um, if you would please look in the first column, about two-thirds of the way down, the chair will read the definition of the Best Professional Artist Hugo Award. 3.3.10, Best Professional Artist. An illustrator whose work has appeared in a professional publication in the field of science fiction or fantasy during the previous calendar year. The chair rules explicitly that the, that the proposed amendment does not affect the, pub the definition of publication in any way. It, does, it, it neither changes it one way or the other. It doesn't address the subject. It merely leaves things exactly the way they are and talks about publication. How various committees wish to interpret this is still unclear. We have not totally defined the word publication. And, it's a, and the chair does not believe it is appropriate for this meeting to get into the matter of trying to define publication as part of this. It's a, it is actually a, an orthogonal, or often an angled subject. Okay. Um, I know I used up a bunch of time. Uh, is that a point of order? Uh, with respect to your specific announcement. Okay. Yeah, Mr. Yellow. Uh, I wish to confirm that when you say that, you are still indicating that this does not affect as well the requirement that the artist's work have appeared in professional publication by whatever definition 3.3.10 has for professional it, Yes, it doesn't touch it. Yeah. it. It does not touch upon those issues. It, Correct. That's an issue I've been trying to clear along the way. Is that this actually this is some other error? Okay. I've used up a bunch of time on <coughs> material there, so where was it? I'll work on it. Okay. Uh, the speech in favor of the amendment. Any speeches against the amendment? Mr. Bloom. Mr. Chairman. Yeah. I'm opposed to this for two reasons. One is because it makes it harder for um, professional artists to get on the ballot by increasing the number of works that have to actually be published from one to three, although that's really not relatively minor. 
And second, because it increases the amount and difficulty of the Hugo administrator's work by, and it, by, by, by increasing the amount of time and difficulty in, in certifying that someone has accepted properly. And puts us in the circumstance where if you cannot reach someone, in, in, in this one specific category, you would have to drop them off the ballot. Whereas in every other category, if you cannot reach someone, acceptance is, it, it, it is uh, by default. Speech in favor, yes. Um, the way it is worded, if they do not accept, they go on the ballot. It's only if they decline that they are removed from the ballot. Speech, let me see, that was in favor. Oh, so speech against. Mm -hmm. Yes. I find it inappropriate to confine this to the best professional artist category. I think if we're to do it at all, we should include best film writer and best film artist. <laughs> A speech in favor of the amendment. Mr. Dargan. As someone who has been on the subcommittee is actually administering this. You're welcome to turn and face yeah, it. On at least one occasion. Um, Having the citations included by the nominators is actually a useful thing, and actually, I, in, my, in our experience, uh, in other categories where that's the case, it actually helps the administrator. I think that would be the case as well. Speech against, Mr. Pim. As a lawyer, <coughs> I tend to dislike useless language, and if this language really is useless, that is, it's merely precatory rather than mandatory, then it really should say, should, the acceptance should include. Since it doesn't say that, I'm inclined currently to vote against it. You want? Do you? Did you want to elaborate? I heard a hunt. I just thought I ought to. If indeed it's not required to do this unless you formally accept, and unless you formally decline your own anyway, then you can informally accept without having to do it. Therefore, it's not truly mandatory. Therefore, the language is, is a suggestion. While I go along with Vince's point that it's useful, if we're saying should, in other words, we really ought to do it in order to help the administrator, then we should say should instead of must. If we intend to make it mandatory, then we must, then we ought to say, if you do not accept, you will not be allowed onto the ballot, and in order to accept, you have to give the three, in which case I go along with Kent that we've now changed it from one piece of art work being published within the last year to three pieces. Mr. Tim, did you wish to propose an amendment striking out the word must and inserting should? The chair would take that as a lesser change. I would so move. Is there a second to striking out must and inserting should? Second. Okay, let me put it in there. The question is on the amendment. If we, if we, so we have, there are five minutes of debate time on amendments, but in fact, we'll run. I believe we'll run out of total debate time first. Um, is it, okay. I take that as that opening argument in favor of the amendment. Uh, uh, speech against striking out must and inserting should. Mr. Yallo. It is true that people can accept without accepting simply by refusing to send in an acceptance. In fact, that never has happened with a handful of exceptions of the many hundreds that we have had. Uh, that deals with the case of, you know, Mike Resnick is out in the middle of nowhere, Africa, and nobody can get a hold of him. Well, his story still makes it onto the ballot. Um, the overwhelming majority, and you can talk to any of the uh, Hugo administrators, of the acceptances are in fact positive acceptances. Yes, people can wiggle their way around the, the rules. There are loopholes that can be exploited. People don't, and if they try to, everybody laughs at them. Speech in favor of the amendment to strike out must and insert should. Other speech against? Mr. Glazer. Um, I'm not sure that I'm in favor of the motion. In general. However, the, the amendment would sufficiently weaken the original uh, um, uh, proposal. proposal that it would become uh, completely useless language altogether. Another speech in favor of the amendment. Mr. Tim, you can, if no one else wants to, you can. Thank you. <coughs> in the past, if a person is not required to provide URLs or other indicators to where the publication was, I could see why the acceptance would be routine. 
if now the acceptance requires work, digging things out, sending it in, or if a person has only one or two rather than three publications in the last year, I can see where it would become a burden on the person to make a positive acceptance. Indeed, he may not be able to. Uh, as to Mr. Glazer's point, I agree that it weakens it, but I think that it is inherently weak so long as one can accept through silence and not have to comply with the rule. My uh, point would be that, in, in, in furtherance of Mr. Uh, Daugherty's uh, comment, that if you are trying to be helpful, they will do so if you ask them to. Uh, okay, speech opposed to the amendment? Anyone else wish to speak to the amendment? Very well, the question is on the amendment to strike out must and insert should. Those in favor of that amendment, raise your hands. Hands down, those opposed? The chair is in doubt, hands down. Those in favor of this amendment will stand. I know it's a small room, but I'll use a certain thing anyway because it's oh, easier. In favor of the amendment. In favor of the amendment to strike out the word. I'm standing. I'm standing. Okay. And we will start over here and count. One. One, two. You either be one of those. Okay. Uh, are you, and you're three. Three. Four. Five. Six. Seven. Eight. Nine. Ten. Eleven. Twelve. Thirteen. Fourteen. Fifteen. Okay, 16 in the affirmative. Those opposed to the amendment to strike out must insert should. Okay, I can see now it's less than 16, but I'll go ahead and count it starting, I think, you're in the first, are you in the first one? You're, yeah. you're actually at the beginning of yeah. One, two, three, four, five, five. Oh, one, two, three, four, five, and then six, six seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. There are 16 in the affirmative and 11 in the negative. The <coughs> affirmative has it, the amendment is adopted. The wording to be added to now reads, in addition, in the best professional artist category, the acceptance should include citations of at least three works first published in the eligible year. And I need to check the time of remaining total. On the main motion, there is no time in the negative 57 seconds in the order. 57 seconds in the affirmative, no time against the uh, two remaining. Anyone wish to speak in favor um, of the of order. Order. Yes? I would like to move to extend debate. That's not a point of order. It's a motion to extend debate. Oh, motion, sorry. Okay. Motion to extend debate so that there can be some time opposing. I All right. Well, how long? Uh, how uh, two long? minutes. Two, okay. Um, I'll take that as a motion to extend debate to a total of two minutes to each side at this point. If, is there any objection to doing so? None. The debate is extended to two minutes in favor of the uh, revised amendment, two minutes opposed. I forget, uh, amendments are considered hostile, therefore we are at a speech, I guess, in favor of the amended proposal. Mr. Keaton. As a Hugo voter, uh, I would be in favor of being able to find uh, the works that that artist has uh, created in the past year because that information isn't always obvious to uh, everybody. You know, who did what cover for which book and, and which magazine. So that's why I would like to see that sort of information provided. A speech against the proposal. Mr. Glazer. The, the, the amendment as now amended is now is toothless and therefore pointless. Uh, I would correct the whole thing. A speech in favor of the uh, main, main motion proposal. Mr. Yellow. Um, in one sense it's toothless, in another sense it is not toothless. When you <laughs> the sense in which it is not toothless is that when you look at your Hugo ballot and you're a final and you're looking at your trying to decide who to vote for, and you see on the ballot four artists who have provided you pointers to their websites showing all the information that says, I did this, this is my work for the right year, and one guy who doesn't. I think that's going to be a strong hint to the voters. <laughs> okay, a speech against the proposal. Any further speech in favor? Very well, we'll bring it to a vote. And since we did go back and forth, I'll go ahead and do a certain count on this. On the revised proposal, on the, the question is on the ratification <laughs> of the revised proposal. All those in favor of ratifying this amendment Ray, please rise. Point of order? Yes? Could you reread what the proposal was? Very well. You have the right to. The proposal is to add to the end of section 3.9 the words, in addition, 
In the Best Professional Artist category, the acceptance should include citations of at least three works first published in the eligible year. On the ratification, those in favor, please rise. And I'll start at the head table with one. Yeah. Are you standing? Okay. Two. Say two. Two. All right. Three. Three. Four. Five. Six. Seven. Eight. Whoops. You were sorry. Eight. Did you? Were you standing? You were was standing, but I thought I was okay. three. Eight, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, 27. Those opposed? Okay, I know it's trivial, so I have to count the three, okay? Right. <laughs> Thank you. 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 Thank
website uh, is the I got an earful last night from everybody about the reasons for not ginning up a new uh, category where you're subdividing things, uh, subdividing old categories. This is not that situation. The, uh, the internet and the websites are pretty much an entirely new medium that, I mean, they did nothing, no one thought of them back when the original Hugo Awards were being uh, dreamed up back in the 50s. Back in the 50s. Um, Everyone recognizes the importance of having a website. The, uh, all the major publishers have them. The fanzines have them. The, the costumers, the uh, filters, uh, the individual artists, and indeed the writers, uh, and the bloggers all have websites. Um, three and a half of our Hugo nominated novels are available, and all the uh, all the uh, shorter works are available through the uh, Nippon 2007 website. Um, the internet and, and websites are uh, they're an equal opportunity medium. Like a typewriter, if you've got the stuff, you can take a typewriter and generate a Hugo winning novel, or at least try. Uh, these days, anybody can find the tools uh, for a couple hundred bucks. You can put up a website that looks every bit as good as something that uh, IBM or Locus or anybody can do. Just sitting around in your room in a bathroom. Um, one thing that we have, uh, I've been searching around stuff for the Nippon site. Uh, I found good sites and sites that weren't so good, and some sites that were, uh, I mean, tremendous, really great sites. Um, a lot of the stuff that you'll find constantly going, it's, it's a constantly changing medium, and one of the things that we have is innovation moving through that. Um, the, uh, we've done some innovating on our own site, especially on the uh, program participants uh, pages. Uh, the, this Hugo is not something new or experimental. We've already given out two Hugos, one in 2002 and one in 2005. Um, Locus won one and uh, sci-fi.com won the other. But the thing is, it's sporadic. We have the opportunity to here to uh, give Denver the opportunity to make this um, recognition of innovation uh, a permanent thing. And so I ask your support for this uh, additional category. The chair does wish to correct one issue here uh, that this will ha if this passes here, it'll have to be ratified next year, and therefore, it'll be the 2009 World Con will be the first one to present. In fact, if you actually parse what he said, that's what he said. I, okay. I, I, I saw I saw a bunch of people twitching, <laughs> and that's why I understand. Mr. Glazer, uh, in opposition. I move to amend. An amendment. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, by the way, the chair does want to point out that undoing what was, undoing exactly what happened yesterday can, uh, was, as a change is not allowed. But continue. Mm -hmm. yeah. uh, in the second sentence, uh, move to amend the word must to should. <laughs> <laughs> no, is there a second? Second. Oh, yeah. oh okay. thank you. <laughs> All right, there is five minutes of debate time on the motion to strike out must and insert should. Let me mark it for myself here. Point of information, if the, if the motion's presenter accepts it, can it be done with no debate? No, this motion no. does not belong to the member making ah. it any longer. It belongs to the assembly. The assembly has to change it. Thank you. The last time it can be modified in the way the member suggests is before it is actually stated by the chair. Right. That's the technical point there. Um, on the question to amend, uh, Mr. Glazer, you made the amendment. You get to, there's five minutes debate time on this. In, in favor. Sure. Um, my esteemed colleague, Mr. Yellow, um, made, some, made an eloquent point, which in fact changed my mind on the previous issue about oh, it being. You've got to stand uh, there, you're still out of frame. Right. Thank you. <laughs> uh, made some eloquent points about uh, the difference between must and should and pointless and toothless. Um, and that uh, for all those same reasons, that if a website, some websites choose to present a, uh, a frozen or static version, and some do not, then I think that those that do have a benefit, but those that do not should not be burdened with the kind of technical requirements that we discussed yesterday. So I, I realize that the, the, uh, the, the making of the motion sounded amusing and perhaps uh, for my general demeanor, 
but I am fact serious here. And for the reasons stated in the previous debate, uh, I believe that much should be shown. Uh, speech against the amendment to strike out must and insert should. Mr. Yellow. Um, I continue to believe that the stronger the language, even if there's loopholes around it, uh, the better. Uh, must is better than should. Having it present at all is obviously better than not having it present at all, but we argued that yesterday. Okay, that's uh, against the speech in favor of the uh, amendment to strike out must and insert should. Anyone else wish to speak to the amendment at all? Those in favor of striking out must and inserting should. Let's try it by show of hands first. In favor, show your hands. Hands down, those opposed. Hands down, the chair believes the negative has it. <coughs> the negative has it, the amendment is, uh, is not, or the amendment fails. Can I start from team? Uh, yes, you can actually, but I would actually, tw I need 20% to ask for a counted vote, is there, is, uh, which would be about six people. Are there six people who wish the vote counted? No. <laughs> At least 20%, right? Yeah. Yeah, okay. They, they, that, that, that rule doesn't come up very often. Okay? <laughs> um, just a moment while I write this. Okay, we're back at the proposal as it appears in the printed sheet, and uh, we therefore add a speech in favor of the amendment, the constitutional amendment. Who wants, anyone wish to speak in favor of best, the best website proposal? Does anyone wish to speak? Uh, Mr. Bloom? I'd like to speak against. Okay, thank you. A speech um, against. Best website is yet another Google category which means that much more work for administrators and that much more things for us to get. Yeah, I know, it's, we're preaching to the choir here. Um, in addition, websites, in general, are eligible in several categories based on their content. I believe that UGOs should be given for their content, not their form, and therefore I believe that this should be defeated because we have in fact given uh, uh, UGOs, in addition to the two for best website, to other websites, as example to uh, uh, Emerald City, right. uh, which was given principally as a fanzine, uh, which is mostly distributed as a website. Uh, and there are other examples of, pla uh, of places where the content of a website, as, a a as it was displayed at a particular time, is eligible for a Hugo. This would then make them eligible multiple times. Okay, a speech in favor of the proposal. Mr. Matthews. Well, the content of the website you may be voting on the form is important because there are certain websites I cannot find anything on. And there's other websites that are very easy to use. And this is having a Hugo for it will encourage people to improve their websites. Uh, speech against? <laughs> <laughs> Susan. <laughs> Forgive me, Ben. <laughs> she's, she's, had fewer, she's had fewer shots at it. You'll get a chance. And she's faster than I was at getting up. <laughs> um, I believe with all due respect to Mr. McMillan that the defect in this proposal, um, in fact, lies in the commentary here, which is an example from every current Hugo category that can be found on the internet. What we are proposing is something we have not done before, which is to give a Hugo for a medium. This would be akin to giving a Hugo for a best printed thing, or a best film thing, or best 3D object, or some other thing like that. Um, I believe that the desire to reward fantasy and science fiction related activity on the web is a laudable one, which I fully agree with. For many of the Hugo categories, I believe that is already covered in that, for example, a short story published on a website, <coughs> as well in the past, sciFiction.com, would be eligible, I think. I um, hope I'm correct on that. Um, the most notable exclusions here, however, are sites which are akin to fanzines, to magazines, sites which um, agglomerate material and do not at the moment appear to have an eligibility category in part due to things like the issue of issues. Must have a certain number of issues during the year, which doesn't work on a website, except occasionally things like the mobility, which do publish in an issue format. I think that rather than add an additional Hugo for best website, we are missing a golden opportunity to revitalize 
the category of best issue of locus, excuse me, the category of <laughs> best semi prosine and to potentially expand the category of best fanzine by altering the language of those two Hugos so that websites may be made eligible. Um, for example, in best semi prosine websites such as SF Scope, Locus Online, Boing Boing, and Making Light could be made eligible as websites which accept advertising and provide income for the proprietors. Um, in fanzine, truthin.net would become eligible, as would the websites, the personal websites of writers like John Scalzi, who is in this case eligible for Best Fan Writer Reward for his work on his website, which is not, however, eligible as a fancy. I believe that this amendment should be um, go down in flaming defeat, and that a committee should be appointed during the year to consider revamping those two categories to further extend the eligibility of work published on the web into those categories rather than creating a new one for what is essentially a medium, not a piece of content. The chair would like to ask the person whose cell phone is ringing to deal with it. I, I don't believe that, you know, no, I don't believe that I was just, I was just asked if that was a motion to refer this to the Digital Wilderness Committee, which already exists. Yeah. Was it? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I have no clue, but I think it was. <laughs> Remember having said that she wishes to refer this proposal to the uh, Taking the Digital Wilderness Committee to report that. That's a committee uh, for the benefit of the member who was not here yet, members who were not here yesterday or last year. Uh, that is a committee that is was set up some time ago and has been continued from year to year to discuss. Uh, electronic works and their effects on the Hugo Awards, etc., etc. Uh, is there a second to the second, motion to refer? Second. On the question to refer to committee, I think Mr. Boreo's spe speech can be considered the first speech in favor. I think it's not been <laughs> Those in, uh, opposed to referring to committee, is there a speech opposed to sending a committee? Is there? Uh, yes, Mr. Tam. Uh, with all due deference to the people who weren't here and are now represented by email, uh, I still think that passing this one today still gives an opportunity for all of the committee work that is uh, envisioned and hastens the day that we will have a Hugo for this new medium. I would therefore suggest that we allow the committee to set itself or to, to deal with this informally rather than instructing it to deal with it and thereby taking it off the table. I would urge that we vote on the merits of the proposal rather than sending it to a committee. Okay, speech in favor of sending to committee. Uh, Mr. Yellow. Uh, the suggestion was made that we need to hasten the day that we do something. I believe that getting it right is more important than, than getting it hastily. And therefore, it would be appropriate to send it to a committee that can give a far more thorough discussion of it than we are able to do here. Those opposed sending the committee. Yes, Mr. Mizells? Um, oh. you're, you're opposed? <laughs> yes. Okay. Sending a committee? Yes. yes. Um, I made a jocular comment just a few moments ago about that'll kill it. Um, sending it to a committee that has been highly inactive seems to me to be a not sensible way of dealing with these things. Speech in favor. Mr. Glazer. So, as indicated yesterday, okay. Uh, this, um, this, yeah, members are re reminded that the old commentary needs to be addressed by way of the chairman. Yes, Mr. Chairman. As I indicated yesterday, the inactivity of the uh, committee of which I am a chair was strictly due to personal circumstances of my life. It had nothing to do with the committee's activities. In fact, several members tried to encourage me to continue them. So I would point that as close to dilatory. Uh, the other is. Um, as the chairman of that committee, I support the motion to move to committee, and I encourage those people who have a vested interest in it to give me their email addresses, and we will pick this up and carry it on. So uh, there is already a Yahoo group for this. We will discuss it. I welcome all points of view and opinions into the committee. Now, in favor of a speech against sending the committee. Mr. McMillan. Mr. Chairman, I would like to actually see a vote on this amendment prior to uh, sending it to the committee. After, if it's shot down, I have no objection at all to putting it in the committee. Mm -hmm. 
The members are asked to show some forbearance for someone not completely familiar with all the ins and outs of parliamentary procedure, all right? Uh, just to, in practical terms, the member is correct, even if the technicality maybe sounds amusing to someone who knows how the rules work. Right? Uh, that was opposed to, uh, another speech in favor of sending the committee? Mr. Guardiola? I'll be on the committee and I'm in favor of doing something, so I'll make one do something. <laughs> Throw me in that briar patch. <laughs> 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 a, a, a speech opposed to sending the committee. Anyone else wish to speak to this motion of sending the committee at all? Very well, I'll try it by show of hands first. Those in favor of sending this proposal to committee, raise your hands. Hands down, those opposed. Hands down, the affirmative has it. And uh, item 432, best website, is referred to the uh, taming the Digital Wilderness Committee. The committee is encouraged to report this one back. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> and, and, and thanks for forgiveness of the assembled for All right. Now, there is an item 4.3.3, which affects the Hugo Awards. I'll come back to someone. Oh, sorry. Yes. Um, Mr. Darby? Okay. Right I have a good question. Uh, no. Persons wishing to be part of the Digital Wilderness Committee should see Mr. Glazer. He is the chairman of the committee. He's authorized to add to its membership at his discretion. Yes, there is a, an item 4.3.3, uh, which is on the following. There's two pages down from page uh, five on your in your packages. That motion has been referred to Sunday's main business meeting. We will take it up. I, let me see, I believe we take it up after site selection <coughs> yeah, business, but there's four questions. Time. It's a right. it's I believe right. it's a jet. We made it a jet. We made it a general order, but doesn't that mean it comes after question time? Comes, question time comes, comes after question. No, no. Question time is a. Yeah, question time is, is section there are two five. sections of question time. <laughs> right, it comes, it comes in between them. Oh, yeah, it's. Um, yeah, actually, it's all the you know, No, no, it's, you're right. Everything under site selection business actually includes question time. So we have to deal with question time and then come back and take what you're. Yeah, yeah, okay, that's right. I'll, I'll take it that way. Yeah. Um, however, we could move to rearrange it. I was. I was uh, was there somebody who's going to rearrange the agenda for Sunday to move this ahead of the site selection? Can't move it ahead of site selection business. What I'm not, I can't. You can't move it ahead of site selection business as it's supposed to be a special order. Well, I guess it's, uh, we can suspend the rules. Just a moment. I want to make. I'm not sure we really want to. You mean you mean actually put it in after 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 five point wait after five point one. Okay. Yes. Wouldn't that be? Is there any real support for that? I think we might. Let me know. Is there a second to that proposal to move it? No, there's no second. Okay, the motion, the motion dies for lack of a second. I don't even have to worry about ruling on it. Uh, Mr. Chairman? Yeah. Mr. Yellen? Um, rule 7.1, uh, page E87, for those who don't have it, essentially says that question time for the immediately success, the immediate successors and things like that. Yeah. Is the special order. It then, however, says if time permits at the site selection meeting committee for future years. The, the chair uh, doesn't want to, to discuss this. We, no. it's, it's, not, it's not a ruling on it. If you want to let Matt ma ma right. finish, I would like an anticipatory statement by the. Since in theory we do not know until we have dealt with this item whether, quote, time permits. I would like an anticipatory ruling by the chair that says that it, it is his opinion that time will permit all of the time permits stuff and that the debate on this item will not exhaust them all of us. The debate on the new item, which technically could prohibit time from permitting <laughs> if it gets extended <laughs> far enough, will not point All right, so all right, all right. The, the chair believes under, although, in fact, the chair warns the members that this could change when we get there. 
particularly if, if, under weird circumstances. For what members does the member rise? I have some information that I think is relevant to this discussion. If I may be, be allowed, Mr. Chairman. All right. Uh, I am presenting a program item on Monday morning, which uh, app provides that the Denver, the, 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 the Denvention Committee and the future selected committees will, uh, committee will, will have time to answer questions as a program item and therefore will not need to take up a large part of the time uh, uh, for this, uh, this body. And I believe that there will be time at that point for, in, in addition, for future bids to present. So I would suggest that large, num large amounts of time for site selection business for question time are, are irrelevant. Uh, it, it is an interesting item. The chair says, based on looking at what the maximum amount of time contemplated by Rule 7-1 is, and the amount of time scheduled for the meeting, and the amount of business anticipated, it is likely that we should be able to discharge all that business. This may change at that time. And anyone who really wants to discuss the technical issue involved in the suspension of the rules and moving the agenda around on this, I do want to think about it a little longer and want to talk to you about it after the meeting. Be maybe two of you who exist. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Now, we will take that up. Okay, so that's dealt with. That will come up tomorrow. Uh, but while we were discussing these things, the chair remembered that we did actually, there was one committee he skipped over that he left unfinished back on page one because uh, I deferred action on it. And that is the World Conrader's Guide uh, Editorial <laughs> Committee. I don't believe we got any report yesterday. Was there anybody here from that committee? Hmm? Um, I don't even remember who's on that committee. <laughs> I, believe it, I believe that it is Sharon. Nobody on. I may or may not be on it. But, uh, <laughs> the chair is going to wipe the slate clean on that committee. <coughs> That, because it's a standing committee, it has to have members appointed to it. But the, the memberships, of the appointments all expire each year. The chair, having consulted with this person prior to this business meeting and found that he will accept it, uh, the chair appoints Bill Parker as chairman of this committee, and Sharon Sabarsky, and such other persons as the chairman of the committee may wish to add to it, and therefore you should apply to Bill Parker who I do not have his address in front of me, but he runs the con, uh, it's conrunner.net. Uh, uh, no, that's Bill Taylor. Did I say Parker? Yeah. I meant Taylor. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Different person. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm sorry. I've been saying uh, too many. I apologize. Taylor. I apologize. It was the wrong one. The, the, I meant the administrator of, of the conrunner.net wiki. Okay, I apologize to the member. Yeah and hopes that he didn't, uh, just, just, anyway. it, assuming, to, uh, assuming that once he actually gets the appointment, Mr. Taylor doesn't run away from it, he, get, he gets it, all right? All right, any other business for the main business meeting? Very well then, we are adjourned until this room tomorrow, 10 o'clock. It is, uh, um, I'm so, okay, wait a minute. No, no, no. If the member is Riz and I haven't finished your argument, do you yeah. have something you want to announce before yeah, I try to do it? Can I, can I? Please, I'm a hold. Make your announcement. If you're interested in joining the um, Digital Wilderness Committee, I would prefer it if you wrote this paper and gave me your e name and email address. Don't just walk up to me. Please give me something I can hold on to. Thank you. All right. Before I adjourn the meeting, is there anybody who wishes to address this meeting for any announcements or other miscellaneous business? Once I begin the adjournment, I'm not going to come back to you. Thank you. It is 11.03 and we are adjourned until 10 o'clock tomorrow morning. Who is new Bethel? Ooh, who what? gave me the start? She did. There's a lady here. That's probably Beth Morse. She was sitting there. Yeah. She's sitting over there. That oh, that's Beth Morse. Um, yeah, no, written down there. Attention, shade of anybody. Uh, that was Dan.